Hey guys! Today we're just going to start by going over problems that I thought would be particularly hard in the questions that I gave you from yesterday. And um, like before, this is not a video that you really need to watch all of. If you got the correct answer or if you looked at the answer key and you're like, oh, I get exactly how to do that, then feel free to skip this or to skip around to the questions that you actually need help with. And you'll probably be able to see it when it's skipping because I'm gonna switch my work to each number as we go. Um, I'm gonna start actually not with one or the three through five, but I'm gonna jump all the way down to eight. If you have questions on any of the ones before that, don't be afraid to check out that answer key or to send me a message. I can either upload a quick video for you or I can explain it on Zoom during our Zoom hours. Or if it's a very quick question, I could probably just answer it in the comments section. So don't be afraid to ask. But let's look at number eight. Number eight is, I would say, the problem child of all of these because it is one that is not like any of the other problems that we've looked at. In this problem, it tells you a point on a circle, and that point is 3, 6. And it also tells you the center of the circle, 1, 8. And we want to find the equation for the circle. Now, that's right here because, hey, this book has an answer key. But how on earth did they know that the radius squared is 8? How did they know to put 1 and 8 in there? Well, this is what they did. They said, okay, I want an equation of a circle. And as soon as I know I want an equation of a circle, I should write down what the equation of a circle is. So that's what I did for my work. And I went through and I just ran through what each of the things in here means because that's gonna help me organize in my head what I need to find and what I already know. And here what I need to find is, I need to find H k and r because remember we leave x and y empty in the equation of a circle or just as x and y because that's going to help us find x y or the points that lie on the circle so if this is our circle x y is just any point that could potentially be on it h and k stand for the coordinates of the center of the circle. So this right here would be our HK. And R, of course, is just that radius or the distance between HK and XY. Now there's a couple things you can think of here. If radius is just the distance between HK and XY, you can actually go ahead and use the distance formula to find the radius. But we actually don't need to do that. You can just use the equation of a circle. Because if I'm looking at this, well, I know that HK according to my question, is the point 1, 8. I have no idea what R is, but I was given the information that X and Y are equal to 3, 6. Since I know that HK is 1, 8 and XY is 3, 6, and I have this equation to help me out or to help me understand the relationship between them and the radius, why not just fill in what I know and see if I can find what I'm missing? So that means that what I'm going to end up with is X, or 3, minus H, 1. Square that and add to it Y, which is 6, minus k, which is 8, square that, and all of this to combined will equal my r squared. So if I can find what this is, it means that I'm just going to be able to replace this missing piece of my formula. And I know that 3 minus 1 is 2, and 2 squared is 4, so this is 4. Plus 6 minus 8, which is negative 2, squared, gives me a positive 4, and that's equal to r squared, which means 4 plus 4 is 8, and 8 equals r squared. Now here I could find what the radius equals by taking the square root of both sides. In fact, I wouldn't even need to worry about the negative value of that square root because radius refers to a distance and therefore is always positive. But the thing is, I don't need to do that. Since what I want in my formula is an r squared, why not just substitute 8 for r squared? I know those two things are equal. So that means here, and I'm just going to fill it out above, r squared is equal to 8. h and k are equal to 1 and 8. Which means that once I filled in my full formula, 
I end up with x minus 1 squared plus y minus 8 squared is equal to 8. And that would be my final answer because that is the equation of a circle. It's everything filled in but x and y. For our next problem, number 9, I have already started setting up this equation to help me out in my paper. So here is my setup for number 9. What I want to know is what is the intersection between this circle and this line. And I drew myself this quick sketch because I really like having sketches. And you can see how messy this one is. It doesn't even have a scale. I just approximated its center to be at 5, 2, and its radius to be, well, whatever the square root of 36 is. Oh, that's 6, so about 6 units. And my amazing drawing skills at work here gave me that lopsided mess. Well, what I want to know is what is the point of intersection of the line x equals 1? And if I were just to drop in x equals 1, that is a vertical line that goes through the x-coordinate of 1. Those are all the places where x is equal to 1. So what I can do with this, x equals 1, is I can see, using just my sketch, that it should go through at two different points. Now, could I make a great graph, look at what those points are, and find them on my graph? Sure. But that's actually going to take a lot of work, and it can be very hard to be accurate using graphs that you draw. There are some nice tools online. If you want to experiment with those, feel free. I love Desmos for that, and I really do encourage you to check it out. But we can solve this with algebra, and it's a good way to practice our algebra skills. Because if I'm looking at this, I know that these two things have to be true if they share a point, like x has to equal 1, and this has to be fulfilled for this to be on the circle. So what I can do is I can say, well, if x equals 1, everywhere I see an x, I can just write 1. And let's do that real quick. 1 minus 5 instead of x minus 5. And I'm going to square that, I'm going to add that y minus 2 squared, and I know that that's going to end up with an answer of 36. And once I see this, this is exciting because all I have left is my y, and if I only have one variable, I can solve for it. So here, 1 minus 5 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. Well, 1 minus 5 is actually negative 4, but I'm ignoring the negative since I knew it was going to be squared and it would give me a positive answer here. Still, I do like to be precise. So that ends up with 16 plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 36. Next, I subtract 16 from both sides, giving me y minus 2 squared is equal to 26. Or, sorry, 20. And here, this is the part where things sometimes go wrong for people. What I need to do next is I need to get rid of the squared. And in order to do that, I need to take the square root of both sides. But when you take the square root of something, don't forget that there's always a positive and a negative answer. So what I'm left with is y minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 20. And the square root of 20 is the same as 4.472. Okay, so don't forget that plus or minus. I know we've been skipping it and skipping it and skipping it in geometry, but that's because geometry is usually dealing with distances, and distances cannot be negative. But this is not a distance. What we're dealing with right here is a coordinate, and we can see that coordinates can be negative. In fact, we already have a negative coordinate down here. One of them is going to have to be negative. So I definitely want to not disregard that negative. But this still isn't a hard problem to solve because all I have to do now is add 2 to both sides. So here, just don't forget that you're referring to two different numbers here. I'm saying what is a positive 4.472 plus 2? Well, that's going to give me the y coordinate of 6.472. And for my second y-coordinate, what I'm doing is I'm doing 2 plus a negative 4.472. And that's going to give me an answer of a negative 2.472. 
And while this does look like we're at the end, we're actually not quite, because you should always double check what's the question asking for. And here the question asks not for what the y is, but it asks for what are the coordinates or what are the points of intersection. And that means we need an x value too, not just the y. But that doesn't take too long because, hey, we already know what x is equal to. x is equal to 1. So we have the coordinate 1, 6.472, and 1, negative 2.472. Now I know that my graph is a sketch, and I know it was super messy, but this gives some credence or some believability to what I found. You can see that we end up with a positive and a negative value, and you can kind of see that, yeah, my circle got super distorted. It should probably be coming around somewhere around here. But we end up with a coordinate here and a coordinate way up here, giving us something where 6 and negative 2 kind of stand to reason. And we're going to repeat this process in just a second with the, and then the weird one, C. I love that on the video, this is actually just a second later. Um, okay, so you guys see I have my messy sketch to give me some guidelines. I've got an equation, and I've got the equation of the line I'm looking for. Oh, but watch out, this one, instead of being an x equals or a vertical line, is now y equals. So we're looking at a horizontal line that goes through at negative 3 in the y-axis. So I'm looking at something down here. And you can kind of see that it probably is going to go through my circle at two points. Remember, according to our lesson, or kind of like that help from earlier, um, you could potentially have it go through no points if it's too low or too high, or you could have it go through exactly one if it hits at just the edge. But it does look like it's going to go through. So here, I'm going to do the same process that I did last time, only instead of replacing the x, I'm replacing the y. So that means that here I have x minus 5 squared plus my y value of negative 3 minus 2 squared is equal to 36. And this is going to give me, well, negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 5, and negative 5 squared is 25. So I've got x minus 5 squared plus 25 equals 36. Next, subtract 25 from both sides, giving you an answer of 11 is equal to x minus 5 squared. Now, here's that place where things go wrong if you've got a circle, or I'm sorry, of course you have a circle. If you have a highlighter or something like that, like maybe circle it or put a star next to it, that'd be a good idea to remind yourself that you have to remember to do the plus or minus here, because again, we're not dealing with distance. We're talking about just normal numbers on a graph. So we have plus or minus the square root of 11. And um, since approximate answers are okay for this one, I'm going to write this out as its approximate answer. We've got plus or minus 3.317, and that's equal to our x minus 5. Now, I don't really need these parentheses since they don't tell me anything for order of operations, and I can completely ignore them. And what I can do to get x by itself is add 5 to both sides. Don't forget that this represents two numbers, a positive 3.317 and a negative 3.317. So when I add 5 to a positive 3.317, I end up with x is equal to 8.317. And when I add 5 to a negative 3.317, I end up with x is equal to a negative 1.683. Now, I'm going to just check my sketch to see that this is reasonable. If you look over here, this does go quite a bit past my center, making 8 seem like a reasonable answer if my original center had an x-coordinate of 5. Um, and you can see my other coordinate is in the negatives, if only just, and that is a negative 1.683. Well, that seems to fit with this, where it's just slightly past um, and slightly into the negatives there. Now, don't forget that while these two things do make sense, my question is asking for a coordinate and not just for x values. So I do need to write these in coordinate form. Since x here is equal to 8.317, then I can fill that in and all I need is my y. And I've been told that y equals negative 3. And over here, x equals negative 1.683. Well, my y is equal to, well, negative 3. And that is the final answer.